Hi, welcome to this training program on the radar. The radar is a tool that was developed to detect delirium. Uh, radar is an acronym. Each letter means something. It means recognizing acute delirium as part of your routine. The radar was developed uh, in a study. Uh, I was the, res the principal uh, researcher on this team. My name is Philippe Voyer. And the other researchers were Nathalie Champoux, Joanne Desrosiers, Philippe Landreville, Jane McCosker, Joanne Monette, and Marie Savoie. The radar is an easy to use tool. Uh, it's a tool that was developed for the nursing staff. We have the realities of clinical practice in mind when we develop this tool. So the tool, uh, we use it after the distribution of medication. So the, the idea behind the radar is really to base um, your assessment on an interaction that is already occurring in your daily activities. So when you give the medication to a patient, there are an interaction. There is an interaction. You see the behaviors of the patient. So after you have given the medication, you complete the radar based on what just occurred. But you also you can also take into account the behaviors of the patient since the last time you have given uh, medication to this specific patient. The the radar form uh, we suggest we, you you put it in the medication log uh, after you have given the medication. Usually, depending on their settings, but we put the, our initials to confirm that the medication has been given. So you turn the page and then you would have the radar form there. So you check the three items of the radar. So it takes only seven seconds on average to complete the radar because you don't, you don't have other tasks to do to complete the radar. You base it on activities that you are already doing. The radar has been validated in elderly patients uh, with and without dementia, in acute care hospital, as well as in long-term care facilities. Here you have a look at the radar form. As you can see on the left column, you have the items of the radar, the three items and the, the introductory question. When you give the patient his or her medication and you have the three items with the hours when you have administered the radar. On the back of the radar, you have also many details about the three items that give more details, more explanation about the meaning of drowsy or the second item, did the patient have difficulty following instruction and so on. I won't go into details at this point because the presentation you are following right now, I will, you know, go, uh, I will explain all of this in other slides. How to answer the three items of the radar? You answer the three items after you have given the medication to your patient or your resident. The first item of the radar is, was the patient drowsy? Did he or she tend to fall asleep, have trouble staying awake? So if you see these behaviors, then you score yes to uh, uh, this item. Otherwise, if the patient or the resident is awake, is alert, then you score it no. The second item on the radar is, did the patient have difficulty following your instructions? So when you enter the room to give a medication to a patient, you expect some behaviors to happen. For instance, you expect the patient to take the medication with his hands, to put it into his mouth, to drink some water. These are behaviors that you have to look for. If the patient is doing all these behaviors and is taking his medication as you requested, then the patient is following your instructions. Otherwise, if you have to repeat your instruction, you have to, re to ask them again to take their medication or to drink some water or to swallow their pills, uh, his pills, then, you know, is not following your instructions. So you will score this particular item uh, yes, yes, the patient have difficulty following your instructions. With patient uh, with dementia, uh, even though they won't take the medication with their hands sometimes or drink water and we help them out, you know, to do that, still the patient has to collaborate with you. So we'll turn his head towards you, 
I will open his mouth to uh, to have the medication put in his, into his mouth with the spoon. So he will collaborate. Again, if you have to ask question, repeat yourself and say, well, can you open your mouth? Uh, can you open your mouth and so forth? Because he doesn't open his mouth to, to have his medication. Then did the patient have difficulty following instruction? The answer will be yes. So the bottom line is, did you have to repeat your instructions? If yes, you score it yes. If no, you score it no. The third item on the radar is where the person movements slowed down. So how are his movements? Are they slow or not? So it's really based on all the movements that you see when you enter the room of the patient or the resident. If you see, you see the patient walking or you see the patient uh, getting up from a chair or uh, you see his movements uh, of uh, his arm to, to, to take the medication. You pay attention to all these movements and you score this item. If you think the movements are slow, then you score it positive. Otherwise, you score it uh, negative. Sometimes it's tricky a little bit. So you can what you can do is compare the movements of this patient with a person of the same age in good health. So if you think the, your patient's movements are slower, then you score it positive, otherwise you score it negative. How to write up your observations in the radar tool. As you can see in this form, uh, the radar tool is uh, very simple to fill out. It's a form that is very simple. You have the date, you have the three items, and then you put a check mark uh, and your initials. So you can put your check mark in yes or no, depending on your answer to uh, each item. So here in this example, I put a check mark into the yes column for the three items. So if the patient was drowsy and it's uh, just before going to bed, so I put a yes and so forth for, for all items. And then at the bottom, you uh, just have to sign your name and put your initials just beside. So it's very simple, very straightforward uh, type of form. We have prepared four videos for you to, to practice uh, your observation skills and also to uh, practice the scoring system of the radar. So you will have to fill out the form, you know, the radar. So what we, you, you will see is the first video and all four videos are you know very similar. It's a nurse giving medication to a patient. So you will watch it very closely and afterward you score the radar, the form that you have. And then I will give you, you know, the answers, the right answers in regard to this uh, interaction. Good morning, Mrs. Trudeau. Mrs. Trudeau, you're falling asleep a lot today. Do you recognize me? It seems, to, seems to me, I think I've seen you before. Could that be? I'm Denise. We saw each other this morning. I changed your dressing. It's time for your medication, Mrs. Trudeau. Mm, it seems to me I took it not long ago. Have your glass of water. Take the time to swallow them, all right? Mm-hmm. I'll come back and see you. Mm -hmm. 
Now I ask you to uh, answer the radar, each item on the radar. So you, you have to provide an answer to was the patient drowsy, did the patient have trouble following instructions, and were the patient's movement slowed down. And just for the purpose of uh, this exercise and the following ones, uh, and put your answer, uh, your check mark at eight o'clock in the morning. So let's say it was in the morning. Now I'll show you what are the right answers. So for the three items, uh, was the patient drowsy? The answer is yes. Did the patient have trouble following your instructions? The answer is no. And in, re in regards to the movements of the patient, the answer is yes, the movements of the patient were slowed down. In this video, what you can see is the, the patient has slowed down. Clearly, the movements of the patient are very slow. Uh, but still, uh, when the nurse asks the patient to take uh, her medication, she takes it uh, like uh, it is requested by the nurse. So even though the movements are slow, the nurse doesn't have to repeat the instructions. This is a very important uh, aspect we wanted to highlight in this video. Another thing that we wanted to uh, put emphasis on in this video is drowsiness. What exactly is drowsiness? Well, a patient who is sleeping when you come into the room is not necessarily drowsy. So what makes the difference between a patient that is drowsy and, uh, in comparison to a patient that is not? In fact, if a patient wakes up easily when you speak to her, you touch her, and you interact uh, with her, and you know she becomes awake easily, then clearly the patient is not drowsy. On the other hand, if the patient is fighting to stay awake or doses up again, despite your interactions with her, uh, you're talking to her or you're touching her, then the patient is clearly drowsy. In this video, it was clear that the patient was drowsy because even though the nurse was interacting with her, she stayed in this kind of state of you know being drowsy, as you can you could see in this video. One last thing about the, this first video that we just saw is one can ask: uh, Is it motor function slowdown or drowsiness? that the patient uh, was showing. In fact, the radar is a screening tool. And at this stage of the process of detecting delirium, it doesn't really matter. What we want to detect is these signs. So it's not very important. Is it really a, a slowdown of the movements or is it drowsiness? In fact, we don't ask you at, at this stage to think about it just check both on the the radar form because the point is you have to detect them first this is the most important thing and we want the radar to be um, integrated into your daily activities and we want them uh, the, the radar not to take you too much of your time so that's why if you start to thinking about is it this or that well no just check both and that's, that's, uh, that's already uh, something very significant to improve the detection of delirium. Now we're gonna look at the second video. It's another situation of a nurse giving medication to a patient. And after the video, I will ask you to answer the other three items on the radar. Hello, Mrs. Trudeau. Are you all right? I've come to give you your pills. Mrs. Trudeau, I'm here to help you take your pills. Take your glass of water. Take your pills. Take your pills. Take your pills. 
Take your glass of water. Take your glass of water. Take your glass of water. Okay, now you can put your answer on the form and put your answer at noon. Okay, here are the right answers. Was the patient drowsy? No. Did the patient have trouble following instructions? Yes. And were the patient's movements slowed down? No. In this situation, what we wanted to uh, stress is really the, the fact that the nurse had to tell the elderly patient several times to take the medication and the glass of water. So these behaviors that you have seen in this, in this interaction is very a clear indication that the patient was not following the instructions of the nurse. Now let's see the third video. Hello, Mrs. Trudeau. You've got a nice magazine there. Is it interesting? Would you like it? Have it? It's yours. I had a gift this afternoon. I got that, but I don't know what to do with it. I went to see my mom. She gave it to me for a snack. That, Mrs. Trudeau, it's a mirror. Would you like to see yourself? How are you today? Are you feeling well? Yes, I'm all right. But about mirrors, you're not going to show me what it is. I've knitted at least 20 in my life. I've done a lot of knitting. I know what it is. Oh, I see. You know, Mrs. Trudeau, I've come to see you and give you your pills. Will you please take them? It won't take long. Take your glass of water. Take your pills. Take your pills, Mrs. Trudeau. Take your pills. Have your glass of water. Take the time to swallow them properly. Right, I'm all right now. You run along now. I have to do my washing. Very good. I'm going to go, but I'll come back and see you in a while. Okay. So now please... Uh, put your answer on the form this time for the hour 5 o'clock p.m. or international hour 17 o'clock Here are the right answers Was the patient drowsy? No did the patient have trouble following instructions? Yes. And were the patient's movements slow down? No. In this third video, once again, it's very obvious that the nurse had to, you know, repeat many times her instructions to have the collaboration of the patient. So she asked many times to take her medication and to take the glass of water to swallow the pills. So that's why we score the second item on the radar as being present. We score it yes. Did the patient have problems following instructions? The answer is yes, because the nurse had to repeat herself many times. Now let's watch the last video. Hello, Mrs. Trudeau. Are you well? Yes. Do you recognize me? No, I don't know who you are. My name's Denise. You know, we saw each other a while ago. I changed your dressing. I don't remember, but I'm leaving shortly. I'm getting out today. My husband's coming to get me. Oh, yes. I brought you your 11 o'clock pills just before lunch, Mrs. Trudeau, okay? What? We're eating again? For heaven's sakes, we've just eaten. Yes, well, it'll be lunchtime soon. We eat often here. Well, thanks, eh? I'll be leaving now. You come and see me if you're passing yes. by our place. Yes, I certainly will. Okay, now you can put your answers on the radar form.
Here are the correct answers for the fourth video. Was the patient drowsy? No. Did the patient have trouble following instructions? No. And were the patient's movement slowed down? The answer is no as well. In this last video, the patient is uh, clearly disoriented in time and has memory problems. However, she is able to take her medication as soon as the nurse asks her to. So the nurse doesn't need to repeat instructions. In this video, what we wanted to really show you is an example of a patient with dementia, for instance, Alzheimer disease. So with patients with Alzheimer disease, they can have you know, important, significant memory problems and be disoriented, but still they have you know, the capacity to follow instructions as like it was shown in this video. Before we conclude this training video, I'd like to share with you some of the winning strategies we have identified in the past few years. We've been using the radar in acute care facilities and in long-term care facilities as well. And we know what are the strategies that will make sure that the answers you're gonna put on the radar form are valid. The first strategy I'd like to mention is that many reasons can explain behavior, but radar ask you to write down what you observe. Regardless of the reason for the observed behavior, the patient has such and such a disease, or the patient slept badly last night, so that's why he is drowsy, or the patient is coming back from a test, that's why he's not following my instructions. Sometimes a nurse would say, well, I check note this item because the patient was coming back from a test or I check no to drowsiness because he, he slept badly last night. But in our study, we've seen that the patient sometimes, yes, maybe he slept badly last night, but it's because also he has a delirium. So that's why at the stage of the radar, it's a screening process. So we don't ask you to try to find an explanation or an excuse to score yes or no. It's really just, do you see it? If you see it, you check it. As simple as that. The other strategy I'd like to mention is try to avoid distractions. Uh, there are many distractions when you give medication. Another patient is talking to you, a colleague just asks you something, a question about another patient, or something falls on the floor, or if you give medication to a resident, let's say in a dining room in a nursing home, there are uh, many occasions to be distracted in such a situation. So we ask you to be very careful uh, not to be distracted as possible. We know it's not easy all the time to control all these variables. But uh, I mentioned this because when you have seen uh, mistakes on the form, on the radar form, uh, usually it was related to uh, a distractions. Something uh, disturbed the nurse and that's why we, uh, we have some items that were not scored or not correctly scored on the, the form. Another strategy that is very important, very simple at the same time, is just prepare yourself. Before entering the room, remind yourself of what you have to watch out for. In particular, do you have to repeat your instructions? So when you enter the room, you're with the patient, pay attention to your, yourself. Do you have to repeat uh, the, to the patient, take your medication or take your pills or swallow your, the pills and so on. So by paying attention to yourself, it will help you to correctly fill out the form. By the way, this last strategy was shared with us by the nurses. Many times during the study, we did interviews with them and they are the other one that told us that this is a good strategy to follow. Another winning strategy is to pay attention to the behaviors of your patient outside of the time you give him or her his medication. Uh, because yes, that the, that's true, the radar is based mostly on the behaviors that you see when you give medication. But if you have seen the patient since the last time you give medication, you can take into account his behaviors or her behaviors. For instance, if the patient is drowsy at 10 in the morning because uh, you measure his uh, vital signs and you see that the patient is drowsy but is no longer drowsy at lunch when you give medication, 
you should still check yes for drowsiness because you have seen drowsiness in between distribution of medication. Last tip before I let you go, even if the behavior is subtle you, or you have doubts about what you saw or the behavior has been present for, the, for days or weeks, please check yes to the item on the radar. Let's say the patient is drowsy or the patient is following instructions but not all the time. Sometimes you have repeat yourself but sometimes the patient is following instruction. Well, if you have doubts, I suggest you score the item positive because we know delirium, you know, the symptoms, they can fluctuate. So it's normal. Sometimes it's not that easy. But our study have shown that nurses have very good observation skills. So when you see something, usually there's really something going on. In conclusion, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And I'd like to say that your participation in the process to detect delirium is essential. So nursing staff are really part of the team and what you see is essential, very important if we want to improve the detection of delirium. Everyone needs to contribute.